Good morning, and you're watching SFAL Access. Today we have the great pleasure to host the Student Organization of the Year, the League of United Latin American Citizens, and learn more about everything they do at SFA. So stay tuned as we dive deeper into the organization. Welcome back to SFA All Access. I'm Maz and Herman. I'll be your host this morning. We are very pleased to have SFA's very own LULAC. LULAC is an organization that is dedicated to creating a space for Hispanic and Latin students to feel safe and welcome at S student at S Stephen F. Austin University. Today, we are very honored to have the former Vice President of Civil Rights, Ivy Cortez, here with us today. Good morning, Ivy. Hey, good morning. Uh, can you tell us more about LULAC's mission and what they hope to achieve? Yeah, so nationally, LULAC's mission is to advance uh, the economic um, attainment, educational advancement, civil rights, health, and housing of the Hispanic population within the United States. Okay, uh, have you hosted any significant events in the past that aligned with your mission? Oh, uh, here at SFA, we've hosted plenty of stuff like that. Uh, uh, one of the first things we hosted when I became uh, Vice President of Civil Rights was a uh, labor rights uh, meeting over the custodians here at SFA. There was a lot of concern over whether or not our custodians here were being treated fairly, if they were getting paid fairly. So one of the first things that we did whenever I came into my position was to go ahead and host an informational about it. Uh, we started a uh, kind of like a campaign to go ahead and make sure that students are keeping campus clean. And this was more so not just for like our community and making sure that our campus is, you know, well kept, sure. but in order to like make sure that we are like handing roses and giving respect to those people who keep our campus so clean, which tends to be made up of a lot of um, immigrants and a lot of people of color. And so uh, those were one of the first things that we did. Uh, we've done other things like um, we try to make sure that we're involved in our community. We stress a lot, especially here at the collegiate level, uh, professional development, making sure that our members know like how to dress uh, to certain things and how to write a proper email, things like that, that maybe you may not get in like a regular college class. Uh, but that's kind of what we focus on here at the collegiate level. That's honestly very sweet. And how do you guys get the idea to start campaigns like that? Do you have meetings? Do you come together? Oh, like we have meetings once a week. Uh, typically they're Monday, but that changes semester per semester. Mm -hmm. um, but at the exec level, they hold their own meetings and people approach us about different things like the custodial event that we had last year. Uh, we were approached about that one because Naturally, LULAC is known to help in those kind of situations. So people approached us about how we could help them here on campus. Uh, so really, it's like people bring things to us to work on and to focus on. And that's really cool that we have that kind of recognition, not only here at the college level, but at the national level, uh, to where people can approach us about those kinds of things. Uh, what are some of the community events that help impact this school year specifically? This school year specifically, we've been looking at a lot of uh, community events. We just had one recently for Cinco de Mayo, or it was it was before Cinco de Mayo just because, you know, it was dead week and all that. But uh, we had a, a lot of community events where we focus on uh, Hispanic culture specifically this year. Mm -hmm. uh, the one that we had, it was along with the Office of International Programs, OLA, a fellow uh, Hispanic organization here on campus, and a lot of other collabs we've done in the past have been, at least in this past year, have been focused on culture. Uh, and we've done a lot of community service events as well. It's been a lot of fun this year, for sure. Uh, can you explain LULAC's fundraising eff eff uh, efforts and how that will support the organization's goals? Yeah, so uh, the cool thing about LULAC is that nationally it holds a lot of conferences uh, and it can get kind of expensive to travel to those conferences, but mm -hmm. they're usually out of state, things like that. You have to worry about hotel, lodging, travel. Uh, a lot of the times whenever we fundraise, we're fundraising to hopefully be able to send our members to those conferences. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of times when you see us selling like agua frescas or <laughs> snacks and things like that, we're trying to help make sure we have funding to send people uh, to have those opportunities because it's great professional development and you can make lots of connections over there at those conferences. 
Oh, absolutely. Uh, how do you guys come up with the ideas, uh, the different ideas for fundraising? Is it also within those meetings? Yeah, so it's mostly a vote. A lot of the times it's, okay, what can we do that, um, one, people are going to want to buy, and two, uh, that is not going to take away so much time that because a lot of us are really busy. We, we're full-time students most of the time. And so it's, okay, what can we do fast, efficiently, and can you know get us the most profit so we can send these people over? Uh, so a lot of the times it is agua frescas. A lot of the times it's snacks, things like that. People who want to eat, you know? <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Um, that marks the end of this segment. And so we will be right back with more information about the lovely Luwax. So stay tuned if you're interested in joining, you won't want to miss this. Welcome back. You're watching SFA All Access. And today we have a special guest from SFA's Luwax Piney Woods Council, former Vice President of Civil Rights, Ivy Cortez. Welcome back, Ivy. Hey. Um, we know Luwax is a national organization with councils all over the country. Have you had the opportunity to meet with other councils? Oh, yeah, there's been plenty of opportunities. Um, most recently that I can think of, a uh, lot of collegiate councils, especially in the Texas area, love to kind of host their own conferences and give the opportunity for other collegiate councils to come and visit, get to know each other and network. Um, here at SFA, the Piney Woods Council actually had the opportunity to do that last semester. Uh, and we hosted um, I believe it was like four to five collegiate councils from our area. It might have been less than that. I can't remember the exact number. Oh uh, but we had U of H council come, UNT council come, and they're great people. Uh, UNT recently had their own council or conference this past semester, uh, and we got to go visit them for that. It was great. Uh, and even at the national level, like I said, we have our plenty of conferences to go to, um, state, national. And I got to go to um, Albuquerque, New Mexico over the summer uh, to go ahead and uh, go to their national convention. And that was a lot of fun. And there's, I mean, it's a national convention, so there was people mm -hmm. from all over there. It was great. Yeah. Uh, going to the national conventions, do you ever like warn stuff and bring back uh, to uh, the SFA's Blue Black? Do you ever like warn stuff to bring back here? Yes. So um, at the time when I went to Albuquerque, um, SB 17 hadn't come into effect yet. Mm -hmm. It came into effect this year. And so there's a lot of talk about SB 17. And it mattered to me to learn a lot about that just because I knew it was going to affect our council here and other organizations here. Um, and we had representation over there from uh, UT Austin who uh, spoke to us about how that might affect our councils and things like that at the collegiate level. And so it was great to be able to go and learn about that, to bring it back to our council because I knew how much it meant to them mm -hmm. to learn about that. Um, other things like uh, opportunities to do environmental work, things like that, um, I was able to learn about and bring back here. It was a huge opportunity and I'm very grateful for it. To circle back to fundraising, how, how does fundraising play a role into going to different conferences and meeting with councils? So the lucky thing about my trip to Albuquerque was I got a scholarship to go. There's scholarships a lot of our members and even non-members can apply for to be able to go to those conferences. Um, and luckily, like it paid for my ticket to there, my ticket back and my lodging. Uh, but it didn't really pay for food or anything like that or travel. And I mean, I can't really bring my car over there or anything like that. And so um, when it comes to things like that, what we did is we just kind of posted a little flyer with my face on it and said, please help me. Uh, <laughs> and, the please help me. <laughs> the please help me. And um, luckily, the, a lot of my family, a lot of um, our alum came together mm -hmm. and were able to donate money for me to be able to go ahead and like fund my way through Albuquerque, um, which was awesome. It was a fantastic experience. Um, and in similar ways, whenever we know that there's a conference coming up and there's not a guarantee that maybe one of our uh, members is going to receive a scholarship, we go ahead and we plan in, a, in advance to go ahead and fundraise for them. So last year, I believe in the spring semester, we had some of our students go to Washington, D.C., uh, and that's what we did for them is we raised some money for them to be able to go. And it came in some uh, luck, too, because we ran into some trouble on the way there. Their tire went flat. Oh and uh, and another flyer went up with a picture, help us, please. And uh, <laughs> people came together and helped us out. I it mean, was great. It's so sweet that the community all comes together to help. It's great. And it, I mean, we wouldn't be able to do it without them. Uh, after scrolling through uh, your website, I saw that you met the civil rights activist Doris Huertas. How was that? Uh, that was freaking fantastic. Uh, <laughs> I've come to love and respect um, 
people like Dolores Huerta. Mm -hmm. uh, my family, we have a background in migrant farm work. I was a migrant farm worker for two years. Uh, and she, along with Cesar Chavez, uh, founded the United Farm Workers Front. And they did the Delano grape strikes in California whenever they were fighting for uh, equal pay and um, basic human rights in, in California. Uh, so a lot of the times farm workers weren't allowed to take bathroom breaks or water breaks or anything like that. And it's California's sun out there. And, um, and it's just not fair. And so Dolores Huerta and Cesar Chavez came together to go ahead and combat that and demand those rights that you know human beings deserve and so to know that she was there i was like oh i gotta go i gotta go meet the lotus <laughs> it sounds like such an honor just to meet her it was great she's and we share her birthday so birthday twin <laughs> what is the process of joining luac for future students coming to sfa okay so um in the fall semester we do a lot of our recruitment uh, we have a lot of new member education opportunities i believe you're required to go to three meetings uh where you learn more about LULAC's history, about what our mission is, about what we do on campus. Uh, and then you go ahead and we have uh, we do have dues that you have to pay for nationals. Mm -hmm. uh, once you go ahead and complete all those three meetings and you pay your dues, uh, you're, you're a member. And so then from there you have access to our like kind of like big boy meetings and where we talk about business and things like that. Uh, but it's a fun process too. You get to meet a lot of people, not only our current members, but people who are going um, through that new member process with you as well. Uh, and it's really exciting. I remember when I was going through it uh, about like, maybe two years ago, uh, I got to meet a lot of my friends that way. So it was really fun. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. It was such an honor to talk to you. Thank you for, and thank you for joining us on another episode of SFA All Access. I'm Madison Herman, and I hope you have a wonderful day.